We awoken were born of light and dark. Our perspective on the universe is a complex one. The light is not inherently good, as your warlords of the Dark Age so clearly demonstrated. In spite of Zavala's preconceptions, darkness is not inherently evil. Some among you already discovered this on Europa. In my travels, I have seen true evil. It is the worm gods that the Hive serve. It is the Black Fleet waiting to strike. It is the entity that commands them all. The voice in the darkness. These creatures are not evil because they wield darkness. They are evil because, like Sathun and Zivu Arath, they are cruel, hateful things with no regard for the lives of others. Some might say that includes me as well. I will let history be the judge of my guilt. Before that judgment is cast, I will see my Tekians returned. Perhaps with them, I can save us all. The attacks against the Blind Well have become stronger lately. Is Zivu Arath trying to rescue Sabathun? Zivu Arath has plans for her sister. They do not involve a rescue. The energy of the ley lines is too great for the blind well to handle all at once. Let's install those batteries and clear out all hostiles. As soon as we get access to those batteries, start hauling. Take turns if you have to. I never knew something as small as those batteries could be so dense. And I thought Glint was heavy for his size. Have you discovered any evidence of coordination between the Scorn and Zivu Arath? I imagine that the leader of the Hidden knows better than any of us. It pains me to say it but we need to target the ether coming from the Servitors. It's better off destroyed than in the hands of the Scorn.
I hate to waste so much good ether, but anything to get the scorn out of the area. War is always a waste of good resources. Get used to it. We've got Taken incoming. Secure your compass before they arrive. to travel. We can manipulate the lines, influence them with our paracausal abilities. Me? I prefer to use causal abilities. I see one of Zivu Arath's minions. I cause it to die. Petra, I believe I asked you to stop making that joke. That you did, my queen. That you certainly did. Trespass beyond the veil brings you closer to victory, both mine and yours. The telemetry you're sending from the compass looks good. There should be a beacon nearby. The beacon is aligned. Get ready for an attack.
There is a malevolent force at work in this plane, Guardian. I can feel it slithering like black water over stones. Detecting beacon alignment, but there are enemies closing on your position.
final beacon is aligned. I'm detecting severe paracausal emanations in your vicinity. Get ready. Well done. We've detected the Lost Techian's location through the Beacon Network. Bring her home. Each time you ignite the beacons, you're doing more than just lighting waypoints. These beacons also help stabilize the Ascendant Plane keeping it from shifting and changing. By your actions, you are making stable routes through the plane and reinforcing it against change and intrusion. In essence, creating a barrier that Zevu Uroth's forces will crash against like a violent tide and hopefully break. Cyrus was like family to me. You've never even met him. I know. Just let me speak to Sabathun, please. No. I won't give that witch another chance to dig her claws into you. Maybe she's right, Crow. You know I am. Sabathun is already in your head. You're a liability to the mission. Why do you have such a problem with me, Petra? Five minutes, that's all I'm asking. The Queen of the Reef forbids it. Well, I don't take commands from the Queen of the Reef. Sabathun unraveled the Dreaming City with a single wish. I've spent years trying to contain that mistake. Better men than you died because of it. To my ear, it sounds like you're the liability. Maybe your Queen's trust in you was misplaced. A knife against a hunter? Hmm. <laughs> I'd be more careful who you pick fights with. Another step, and my Corsairs will have to prepare you a second grave. Save it for the Hive, both of you. This isn't getting us anywhere. Thank you. We can all probably use a minute to cool off. Oh. Oh no. Keep both eyes on that one.
You can't stop the inevitable. No one can, though Petra Van seems perfectly willing to try. I've always sympathized with Crow, you know. All the kind words I shared with him as Osiris were sincere. I know what it's like to be an exile. To be hated for things outside of your control. It would be better for Crow if we talked. I want to explain why I did what I did. I want him to know that my affection is true. Because the less he knows, the more vulnerable he is. Doomed to be strung along by false promises from supposed benefactors. But then again, I'm the one trapped in the crystal prison. What do I know? You're in. Venge thinks I'm vulnerable, and I'm supposed to just take a seat? Like I was the only one fooled by Savathun wearing Osiris' skin? You'd known him far longer than I thought I had, but I don't see her forbidding you from speaking to her. Because it's not about me. It's about who I was, isn't it? Every time the Vanguard tells me that things will get better, I thank them. As if it's a privilege not to be beaten to death. Our past lives aren't supposed to matter. I'm beginning to wonder why I'm the only guardian being judged by mine. No more apologies. No more creeping around on eggshells. I deserve an audience with Savathun. I deserve to know how much of what she told me as Osiris was a lie. I deserve answers. I don't need to be Marasov to see into your mind, Guardian. You think I'm making a mistake. You think I barred Crow out of pettiness. I won't say I didn't recommend it, but it was the Queen's order for his own safety. I see Prince Aldrin's arrogance in him, his desire to please. He's vulnerable. Aldrin and your Crow are echoes of each other. Surely you can see that. They share kindred weaknesses, Sabathun will exploit them again if we let her. But with Mara back, I can finally see the end approaching. It's been a long time coming. There are still Techians in need of your strength. I wish I could fill their place, but this must be how things are. I'm here if you need me. The light is not inherently good, as your warlords of the Dark Air.
got a job for you. Riga worried their song had attracted the storm's attention and made plans for the flock to leave the hollow. She locked herself away to study. The separation pained Agar. Like you know it does. Unable to bear the loneliness, Agar finally took to the sky. High above, the open air cradled him like star cloth ribbonettes. He felt peace in the deafening rush of wind across his feathers. Once he found them a new home, Riga would love him as he loved her. She would offer him the scepter their mother had crafted for him. The scepter that Riga selfishly kept. But as he approached the forest's edge, night fell and thunder shook his heart. Agar saw a great storm building on the horizon. Had he the scepter, he could have fought. Instead, he listened, straining through the thunder for the faint, secondary beat of Riga's twin heart. Through lightning and chaos, he followed it home. Agar told Riga of the storm the forest's edge, and the gleaming bulbs of starlight clashing overhead. She didn't scold him or tell Mother Kestrel. She listened and heard the possibility in his tale. Gratitude. Imagine that. In another life, I'd have appointed Aldrin Dominion of the Reef's Borderlands to expand and connect the kingdom under my reign, Agar's scepter in hand. He would have used it to open doors and challenge foes best left alone. He was not unlike a guardian already, and he would have died before his time. Aldrin's fall was a predetermined point, so I hid the scepter away and gave him something safe to chase. He often strayed from that path. 